Welcome to the physics classrooms video tutorial on static electricity. The topic of this video is conductors and insulators. Here's what we hope to learn. What are conductors and what are insulators and how does the fact that an object is a conductor or insulator affect the electrostatic behavior of that object? I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. A conductor is a type of material that allows for electrons to flow freely across its surface from atom to atom and particle to particle. To illustrate this idea, let's consider this neutral conducting sphere that is touched by a negatively charged object. Upon touching, there are excess electrons deposited up on the sphere and all located at the point of contact. These electrons don't like one another because, as we know, like charges repel. And so they would like to distance themselves from one another. And the fact that this sphere is a conductor means that those electrons can move freely across the surface from atom to atom and particle to particle. And the result is that those electrons become uniformly distributed about the surface of the sphere. This illustrates the idea that if you touch a conductor, the excess charge will distribute itself uniformly about the surface surface of that conductor because conductors allow for the free movement of electrons from atom to atom and particle to particle. An insulator is a type of material that does not permit for the free flow of electrons from atom to atom or particle to particle. Let's consider diagram A. A negatively charged object is touched to a neutral insulating sphere. Let's presume for a moment that when touched, excess negative charge is deposited upon the sphere as shown in diagram B. But because this is an insulator, that excess negative charge remains right at the point of contact. Let's suppose we were to touch it a second time. If we did, there would now be two locations where excess negative charge enters the object. But because it's an insulating sphere, the charge remains put. It cannot move from atom to atom and particle to particle. If we were to touch it a third time, we would now have three locations of excess negative charge, and that charge would remain put exactly at the point of contact. The point here is that when you charge an insulator, the charge does not evenly distribute itself across the surface of that insulator, because insulators are a type of material that does not permit electrons to move from atom to atom and particle to particle. To further illustrate the difference between an insulator and a conductor, let's suppose that we charge an object within a series of interconnected objects that are a mix of insulators and conductors. In these diagrams, we're going to use a white-filled rectangle to represent a conductor and a gray-filled rectangle to represent an insulator. In our first example, we have two conductors and an insulator, and we touch the conductor on the left. When we do, we deposit charge there, and that charge would uniformly distribute itself throughout that conductor. But because it's connected to another conductor, the charge doesn't stop there. It continues to distribute itself across the surface of the first two conductors, but does not enter the insulator since insulators do not permit for the free flow of excess charge across its surface. In the second diagram, we'll flip it around and we'll touch an insulator which is connected to two conductors. The charge will enter the insulator at the point of contact, but it will not distribute itself throughout the insulator or continue moving towards the conductor, and we end up with this arrangement of excess charge when done. In the third example, we have a conductor followed by an insulator followed by a conductor, and we'll touch the conductor on the left. And as you would expect, the charge distributed itself across that conductor. But because that conductor is attached to an insulator, it does not travel into the second insulator. Because insulators do not permit for distribution of charge. And because it can't even enter that second, second object, it can't make its way towards the third object. And we end up with this final arrangement of excess charge. In the last example, we have an insulator followed by three conductors. And we're going to touch one of the middle conductors. And when we do, excess negative charge enters that conductor and then distributes itself evenly about the surface of the other two conductors. But it does not go to the insulator. The result is we have this final distribution of charge. The point of these illustrations are that conductors allow for the free flow of excess charge across its surface, but insulators do not. In a previous video, 
this one, we discussed the idea that protons are tightly bound in the nucleus of an atom and cannot move. So you might be wondering, exactly how can excess positive charge distribute itself across the surface of a conductor? Well, we're going to talk about it. Let's begin with diagram A, in which we have a neutral conducting sphere, and we're going to touch it with a positively charged object. And when we do, we see in diagram B that that sphere becomes positively charged. But because this is a conductor, we expect that excess of positive charge does distribute itself uniformly across the surface of the sphere. But how? if protons can't move? Well, the explanation includes electrons. Electrons are attracted to excess positive charge. So from all locations within the sphere, there are some electrons that say to themselves, hey, look at that positive charge. I got to draw near to it. And so they begin to move from nearby and distant atoms towards this excess of positive charge. And every time an electron leaves an atom, it leaves that atom with positive charge. And so the movement of electrons from nearby and distant atoms is what causes the distribution of positive charge across the surface of the sphere. It happens because every time an electron leaves an atom, whether it's nearby or distant, that atom becomes positively charged. So let's talk about examples of conductors and insulators. We'll begin with conductors, where we have metals, aqueous solutions of ionic compounds, the graphite form of carbon, and even the human body as a conductor. For insulators, we have things like plastics and styrofoam and rubber and paper products, and even dry air is an insulator. But it's best to think in terms of white, black, and gray when it comes to conductors and insulators, and to place these materials on a continuum. And along the continuum, we have at the far right the metals, like silver. And at the left side of the continuum, we have the insulators. In the middle are the metalloids of the periodic table. They're the semiconductors, the gray of this continuum. Three materials I'd like to point out to you. One is dry air, the other is water, and the third is the human body. If we put it on the continuum, it would be on the conducting side of middle. But one thing you might notice is that during the winter months, that's when you experience the most static electricity phenomenon. That's when your hair becomes bad hair. Not quite that bad, but you still are going to have bad hair days during the winters. Why is that? It's because your conducting body is now surrounded by dry air. Not air saturated with water, not humid air, but dry air. And when your body is surrounded by dry air, over the course of the day, it builds up a static charge and it can't release it to the water within the air because there's no water in the air during these winter months. The result is the charge on your hair begins to spread out and get further and further apart and begins to look a little bit more like that. The final contrasting property of conductors and insulators has to do with what happens when you touch a conducting or insulating material. Let's begin with touching a conductor. When you do, there is a flow of charge from the conductor to the person that touches it. This occurs because conductors allow for the free flow of electrons across the surface of that conducting material. There's often enough flow of charge from the conductor of the person to discharge this conducting object, a process we sometimes refer to as grounding. When you touch an insulator, there's no flow of charge from the insulating material to the person that touches it. That's because insulating materials prohibit the flow of electrons from atom to atom and particle to particle. The result is that the charge remains fixed upon this insulating material. It's difficult to ground an insulator simply by touching it with your body. So at this time in the video, I'd like to give you an action plan, a series of next steps for making this learning stick. Before I help you out with that, could you help us out? If you like the video, give us a like, subscribe to the channel, and tap the bell, or leave a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's two resources that you'll find on our website. We have links to each of them in the description section. Either one of these resources would be great next steps, follow-ups to this video, ways to make the learning stick. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and thank you for watching.